All right, welcome to a quick video here, a quick scene or easy escapes, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I've been doing some a little bit more involved types of projects here with, you know, a lot of things going on in a mirror card type of thing with the autumn scenery. I just did another piece that was more of an experiment with the, uh, I don't know, kind of this, I don't know what you would call this, kind of a kaleidoscope looking um, holographic vinyl sticker printable cardstock. <laughs> Not cardstock, sticker paper, I should say. Okay, but this took a little while to do because I'm kind of working against all that type of, um, oh, kind of a hot background uh, in the background and trying to get this to harmonize somewhat with this background in here, okay? But I really love the look of this autumn scenery just on a photo card, and I thought this could really make an easy a uh, photoscape, uh, photo stamping scene, whatever you want to call it, okay? And that's just stamping on top of a printed photo card, okay? Printed photo paper with clouds. And let's see how that would go here, okay? So I'm just doing this in black. I can add other tones into it if I want to, which I think I will, if I may. I'm just going to go in here with some orange tones. Okay, now it's not going to look orange because I have the black on there, but just get in getting a little bit of a head start on some of the colors that I'm going to bring into it, okay? So that's a little bit of orange, and I just wipe this off with the Marvy tones. I've been, you know, doing the same type of process, you know, with the same pen. This pen's probably 30 years old because it's even in the old barrel here. This is the way that we used to color all the time. So um, getting all those different types of uh, colors or variations in our actual impressions to make things go even faster than just coloring in everything um, post impression, okay? All right, so uh, you don't have to do that. Like you said, you can stamp it out in black. Okay, with photos, you have to kind of des designate which way is up, which way is down. You know, I can do it this way, but I'm just going to make this easier because this is going to cover edge to edge this way, okay? And this is the same photograph, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, it is right here. See this right here? It's the same one used in this one right here, okay? Colors look a little bit different, though, don't they? But I'm going to do this one this way. Let's see, maybe I'll go like this. And like I said, it just covers from edge to edge. So it just makes this a little bit faster. And again, I just want this to be a fast, uh, quick stamping card, okay? But I'm gonna show you some of these different techniques that I like using in here. All right, so this is stamping out in a water-based or dye ink, okay? And it's because I really like the use of, um, alcohol inks on this card. Okay, so we have this stamped out. Notice where the blue was in here. That area is blue in there, okay? But we're going to bring in some other colors into that, and we're going to do some paint pens, and paint pens can be really, really fun to use, especially for autumn imagery because it makes it nice and shimmery. So believe it or not, <laughs> it doesn't look like it's going to look like that, but that's what we're going to do in here, okay? So I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to bring in some autumn-looking tones into the scenery using alcohol inks. And alcohol inks are really fantastic to use on photo paper because alcohol inks really stay on the surface of that type of emulsion coating that is photo printing paper, okay? This one on, happens to be on a glossy. Uh, let's see, let's dry this a little bit more than it is right now, okay? That's a little bit dried up, but where I did use um, a lot of those pens, there is a pretty decent buildup of ink in those areas, okay? The photo papers um, are designed to dry fairly quickly as you run them through your printer and you get that inkjet printer buildup on here, especially for color photographs and portraits and all that type of thing. So if I do get a little bit of smearing, you know, that's something that can be remedied by allowing this to dry, you know, just sitting out and drying for about three or four minutes. But we're going to hit it right now because I'm trying to make this go fairly quickly. All right. If it starts smearing on me too much, then I will give it a little bit more of a Oh, drying time or whatnot. But I think this looks fine like this. 
All right, so I'm going in and I'm coloring in my trees, okay? Now, uh, alcohol inks are transparent, so if I go over a blue area with the yellow, it's not going to look yellow, okay? But we have our other colors to come, so no problem with that. All right, so this is kind of a dull pastel yellow that I'm using right now, okay? And I am, like I said, I am picking up a little bit of that tone on there. All right, let's go with an even brighter yellow. So this is more of a canary yellow, okay? This was the uh, yellow that I used before. A little bit dull. This one gets a little bit brighter, okay? So let's go in here and we'll add in some little bit of a brighter yellow. You can see that coming into play. I usually work from light to dark using my um, transparent media. Okay, now I'm going yellow down here, but it's just kind of a foundation for the other green tones that I'm going to use in that area. I'm not filling in everything. Sometimes I'm doing a little bit of scribble. Sometimes I'm going like this, you know, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit like that. Just kind of based on where some of the imagery is within this piece. You don't have to be perfect with this type of um, scene either, okay? It's just not designed for that type of uh, particular designated applications, okay? You be a little bit more loose with it. I mean, you can be very careful, but I'm just saying that you don't have to be. Okay, now let's see. Um, do I have a bright yellow green? Maybe this one right here, okay? All right, so let's use some of this down in this green area, and I'm going to retain some of the lighter areas in here as well, so you don't have to make things super uniform. As a matter of fact, variation looks better because it looks like different lighting is hitting this, okay? So in some of these areas, we just left it more of that yellowish tinge, okay? Now well, let's keep on with the green tones, okay? I'll add some of this. I'll have some of this reflected down here. This is kind of a dull green right in here. Come into these areas like so. Okay, I'm kind of coming into form a little bit. Uh, this is a light green. Uh, let's see. I almost forgot about my reflections down in this area. Okay, so maybe I'll go back in and hit those areas with a little bit of a brighter tone, okay? Some of these areas that are reflecting down here and those reflections are drawn in the design. So you can just follow suit by coloring in those the same. Okay, let's see. A little bit of a yellow uh, orange or orangish yellow tinge. This is a little bit of a beige color. I'm going to use that right on this little sandbar on the edge of the um, the the bank here. It's pretty, eh, you don't really see it too much. And let's try this orangish tinge, okay? So it's, getting, it's kind of just changing my color scheme a little bit more with each tone that has been laid down. And um, in theory, okay, Sometimes you may make things a little bit muddy looking, you know, with more and more colors. But the thing about that is if, if it becomes a little bit muddled or something like that, if you want to remove some of this ink, you can. You just go in with your blending pen and just go right back into it. Okay. Using some of this down here. Like about like so. And let's try, uh, let's get a little bit bolder. Let's go with some brighter oranges like this, okay? Now remember, this bright orange is transparent, so I'm laying it down over that blue, so it's not going to look blue because it's not opaque, it's transparent, so colors underneath will always show through, okay? All right, and we have that colored in there. I mean, you can stop wherever you want. I mean, if you want to go to reds or something like that, you can. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. Let me adjust my uh, exposure a little bit more so you can see what's going on a little bit better. Let's go with a little bit of a brighter red, okay? This one's pretty red here. I don't know if I want to be that red, but let's 
introduce it as a couple little swatches in here, okay? And after I add it in there like that, it really stands out too much, okay? It's very clunky, so what you do is you just go back in with a lighter tone. Let's go all the way back to yellow. And again, this is the um, uh, photo paper here, so you can just blend that out. You can even lift it off if you want to, but I'm blending it in just like a blender um, pen, you know, that's kind of clear, you know, binder liquid only. But I usually, I don't use my blender pens too much. Usually I just use a lighter color of the object that I am applying my color to. I figured I'm getting a little bit of a blending in there rather than just, you know, a removal of ink or media. All right, so that is that. You see those different tones in there? I mean, that looks okay, but it doesn't look um, kind of like a full statement to me, okay, in terms of a, a nice resolved area. Okay, I wanna bring in more of a shimmery type of opacity to the scene, make it like really reflective leaves and such. This is kind of what this one looked like before I applied my pens in here, okay? All right, so much darker and, uh, I don't know, you know, it's, it's see-through, so we wanna bring in that opacity. Here's the one that I did today. You know, just a little bit of a different color scheme. Every time you do these things, it comes out a little bit different. All right. All right, okay, so what we're going to do now, when I'm using a slightly more opaque, or a lot more opaque, types of media, what I do is I work from dark to light like that, okay? I mean, this isn't real dark, though. I'm just saying darkest color, okay? Because I already have my foundation colors on there. So let's do that. And that's because yellow will look yellow over the top of orange, where if you put yellow on top of orange down here, again, those are transparent colors using those alcohol inks. The darker color, just like this blue underneath here, it shows through all that, so nothing there is very light because it's only going to be as light as that blue ever until you hit it with something like this. Okay, so darkest color first, and this is going to really stand out kind of weird because it's a kind of a weird texture in that one little area like that, but we're going to bring that different texture around in here, okay? And again, we'll kind of make these objects hopefully kind of shimmer a little bit. Um, in the darker areas, these little dots are going to stand out even more, okay, because we have more contrast against the background, okay? But we're going to keep adding this in this. I know I, I don't always do this, okay, but I'm stamping over colored backgrounds, so this element of opacity really helps out with um, the objects that are stamped over varied surfaces, photographs, um, holographic papers, etc. Okay. All right. So that is my orange. Now let's go on with some yellow. Yellow happens to be kind of a common color in both the orange tones, right? Because orange and red mixed form, I mean, yellow and orange, yellow and red mixed form orange, I should say. But yellow also looks great in the grassy areas, you know, yellow and yellow green, making it a yellow green, all right? So we'll go down here in my little tufts of grass and whatnot. This is kind of your highlighting now with this, okay? It becomes a little bit uh, impressionistic, I guess you can say, in some ways. And it's like these little colored little dots of light, you might say. All right, so then it's kind of bringing it to life a little bit. At some point in time, my pens get a little bit, uh, they're a little bit large of a dot. So what we'll do is we'll mix it up with our um, 0.7 millimeter pens, you know, as opposed to just the uh, um, three millimeters. And three millimeters is a pretty big pen. 
Okay, big tip. Okay, it's fairly bold. But the thing about it is it gives us a lot of space very quickly. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to go in with this dollar red uh, yellow right there. Let's go in with our orange right here, our smaller dots, okay? And that will kind of, oh, it'll give us a little bit more detailing and kind of adding it into kind of specific areas. Kind of adding, things are a little bit random at times, you know, I'm not having to keep anything in any place real specific, okay? And again, this is not, you know, this is a technique that you can use when you're stamping things out on white, you know, piece of white paper, but with white paper, the forms are a lot more distinct because you don't have them, you know, all those textures from the background running through it, okay? So just keep that in mind. You know, I'm doing a little bit more on this because I have those textures of the background showing through. But this is a really fast technique because we don't have to do those textures. You're not making them. They're just inherent in the sky figures themselves. So you have all that background and all those kind of reflected areas down here of the clouds already taken care of. You're just addressing the, you know, your little stylizations. Um in the uh, stamp form, so that's really fun to do. You know, you can concentrate all of your kind of energies into, you know, I don't know the objects, I guess, that you're stamping out. I, li I love doing backgrounds, though, don't get me wrong, okay? Just that sometimes it's kind of fun just to play around with, kind of focal, you know, focus on in, focusing on uh, other kind of aspects of a scene, um, like something like this, and, you know, there's the, um, whole aspect of it, uh, blending things in with one another and seeing how that would go. And we're just kind of watching it develop. All right, but see that kind of, that you know, a real shimmery type of fall type of uh, look uh, taking place. This is or, uh, green, just like this one right here, but much smaller. Let's concentrate this one down in our kind of grassy foliage underneath the trees. I already put some of that yellow down there, but, you know, kind of a adding and blending it in with some of this green gives it a little bit more uh, depth of color. You can put some of it up in the trees too. All right, real shimmery looking. And that's what I want, you know, that's what I'm going after when I'm doing um, foliage, okay? I've hiked underneath uh, kind of backlit fall colors and whatnot before, and it just, to me, the thing when I'm doing these fall scenes that I'm really trying to depict is, um, is my memory of hiking through these types of trees and having them backlit and just the wonder of it. See, it because it's like these little leaves are all different colors and then you have them backlit so they become colored light that's uh you know shining through and that's the thing that i'm always trying to depict when i'm doing um fall colors as opposed to just looking at it from this angle on okay i'm trying to get that you know that depiction of a backlit illumination i love it uh, walking under a kind of a canopy of uh um aspens or something like that to, to me the thing that occurs to me when i'm doing that type of thing is it feels like i'm walking through um kind of a stained glass like a living stained glass painting all right, so trunks of the trees. I'm going with my white pen and I'm just kind of bringing back 
the trunks in here and maybe some of the branches. Okay, you can do those down in the water as well, like that. Uh, in some of these areas, I'm just kind of making it up. I'm just going from uh, the grass line because I can't see where my trunks are anymore. So I'm just kind of adding them in and you can add them in anywhere. It's not like a, if you guess wrong. Oh, my gosh. You know, I got a I got a trunk in a you know wrong area. It's not like that at all. All right, so you see these different types of trunks running through there. And then we'll mellow them out a little bit more with some additional um, paint pen dots right over the top of them, okay? So then we'll go over them with um, color. All right, so let's hit this. And it's a little bit busy in here, but then you just come back over the top of some of these branches or trunks and or trunks with some additional uh, paint. Don't cover them all up, you know, you want those trunks in there uh, for a reason. But you just break up the line a little bit with this. And it, again, it makes it look look like the leaves are in front of some of those trunks, you know, you put some of the foliage back in over the top of it, and it just kind of breaks those up a little bit more. Let's try it with some yellow in here. And that is that. So it's a fun little surface where we're working down here. And then what I'm going to do is, um, let's see, I was talking about in my workshop tonight, or not workshop, but um, live stream. I'm gonna add in a little bit of foreground into this scene. Just use the oak branch here. Yeah, it's a good foliage type of thing to add in the foreground. We have a lot of space up here, and I'm going to just do this in black because we already have a lot of, kind of busy colors working in the background already. So I'm just going to keep this very, you know, kind of a silhouette in nature just to frame the piece off a little bit more, and we'll do that on both the top and bottom of the scene. So we have that going in there. You can use this down here. It might get a little bit repetitive. We do something like that. So a lot of times what I do, I just put some dark reeds in the foreground. Let's see if that black is going to be sufficient over the top of that. I think it is. It's stamping over the top of um, some of those um, applications of alcohol ink, but it, this dye-based ink doesn't have, seem to be having any problems stamping right in there. And we get that, we get a little bit of framing on the corners like that. Let's say I use this little stamp today too. Well, let's use it again right here. It's just some birds flying in the sky. Nice and light, even pressure. Don't use the same amount of pressure that you used on these really large stamps like that. And I'll tell you what, let's add a little bit of uh, focal point into the scene in the form of this little kayaker. It's like the ideal kind of a location to go kayaking in I would say if you're if you were a kayaker I'm not one but when I look at this it certainly is somewhat evocative and 
I don't know, it makes me, it makes me wish I was a kayaker with access to, you know, this area right here. Okay, so the thing that I always do on my scenes is I like to blend in my applications of my objects, in this case, the Autumn Brook, with the surrounding areas, okay? So if I have white in my scene somewhere, in this case I have a lot of it, in the form of the, the clouds in the photograph, what we're going to do is I'm going to take some white pigment ink, okay? and add that in there. But here's the trick. I'm going to add it in in a very light application, okay? So I'm inking this up and kind of smashing it down into the surface of this, okay? But it's going to be a light application of it. I don't have this. This isn't sopping wet with ink, okay? And this is going to be really important right here. The touch that you want is when you touch it very little like this. See, I can't see anything, right? That's another 10 taps, and it shows up pretty good, okay? Don't rush it now. Keep your taps consistent, and I mean, if your thing is completely dry, then you'll need to re-ink, yeah. But see this right here? Where white meets a darker area. So this isn't super dark in here or anything like that, but I'm going to add a little bit of white pigment ink into some areas like that, and see that little area just starts to become a little bit more diffused. It's like a little bit of light or mist rising from the water's edge, like that. See that? It makes it glow, doesn't it? Let's add a little bit around here, too. I don't add it everywhere because I want it to contrast against some sharper, darker forms like that. But look how much that is really setting in the scene a little bit more. Let's make these uh, trees in the background. Let's push those back a little bit and just change the texture of it a little bit too. See that right in there? See, there's a different light that's hitting some of these objects in here, right? See, there's that cloud right behind that's white, so I'm going into that tree a little bit. So doesn't it look like the scene is just kind of sitting in the scene a little bit more? This area right here is a part of the stamp, but let's put a little bit of mist or fog kind of in the back of it, and look how much that pushes um, the objects a little bit backwards, okay, in the scene a little bit more. It creates a little bit of space between this and the background, doesn't it? Doesn't it look so much more dimensional that way? Now I keep, you know, tapping in some additional ink on here. And let's put a little bit of uh, tone or lightness over here. Why don't we bring it in right down here in the foreground area? I'll put some of this over this little bank right here. How about actually right over the kayaker too? I'll put a little bit in front of the kayaker so that the kayaker is in a little bit of light and mist, okay? It's like an early morning paddle for that uh, character, okay? Let's go with a little bit more back in here. How about some over some of the smaller birds in that image, okay? So see some of those birds are lighter than the ones up here. It was all stamped in black, but I just put some white over it. Now look at that. It looks like they're going back into the distance a little bit more. Just in there, but see all those soft elements down here? So it really kind of blends in the imagery a little bit more. And remember how, you know, this area in here was really dark before because that blue is coming all the way down here. The paint pens and the white going in there lightens it up. And it doesn't, you know, we're not so aware of this whole area being kind of blue anymore, okay? I'm going in there a little bit more because I just see a little bit more of that blue. Not that we have to get rid of it. So this tree up here, let's bend that tree a little bit in the light by adding a little bit of a lighter tone like that. So it doesn't that look like that branch is being illuminated by light now, okay? So it's the same impression. Everything is just all black, but you can manipulate your objects to look a little bit more three-dimensional by changing the texture of it and the lighting that's hitting it. It's a super easy thing to do and it can make a pretty big difference in the overall feeling of the piece. 
So there we have it there. Let's see what amount of time are we on right here? 30 minutes, okay? We've done a great photo stamping um, technique right here. We've stamped our imagery in dye-based ink like that. We've applied some alcohol ink techniques that did not have to be perfectly applied or anything like that. Um, bringing in different tones and textures into it kind of gives it a little bit of a watercolory type of look when you're using those alcohol inks and they're dissolving and kind of going back into solution. You're going back into it with a lighter one, kind of spreading out the darker tones and brighter tones. And then we went into it with the paint pens, a couple different forms of paint pens, which are really perfect for autumn types of imagery um, when you're doing representing kind of shimmering leaves and whatnot. I'm just adding a lot of dots in there. It was done in a very abstract manner. But what brings the forms back together a little bit more and says that this is not just a blob of color, you know, are these little branches that we go back in, the trunks going back into it with the, uh, the white ink like that and adding those trunks back into it. And then a little bit of finalizing of the composition with some foreground elements on the top left and right and bottom left and right corners like that. Kind of focal points in the terms of birds, you know, and this little character like that. It kind of gives um, scale to things. We know how far back that is by having this kayaker right here uh, as a reference point. And that's it. You can format this under your cards and whatnot, your, you know, folded cards. This is a four by six print right here, but, um, you know, you can tape that right down on there. You can do it on the inside of a card, whatever. You got to have it, some areas in here. You can, you know, stamp out a, a word stamp or something like that, you know, like a piece or I don't know, whatever. Autumn. I do have some scenic sentiment um, stamps that go into autumn and fall types of uh, things, you know, when something, when the time of fall, when every leaf becomes a flower, meaning color and whatnot. But you can do that. You can stamp out, you know, your quote stamp on the inside of a card for fall. You can send it to a friend and whatnot, and they can enjoy a nice fall representation by your own hand and a nice shimmery type of texture on there. You know, it's one of those nice things about handmade stamps, um, cards, you can feel the texture and uh, kind of the media that went into, um, you know, the creation of it. These types of cards like this with the media that I used on here, you could spray seal this if you want to, but you don't have to because this surface on here really grabs the inks really well. And the um, alcohol inks and the paint pens, the acrylic paint pens, they really don't dull out when they dry, like most of uh, the dye-based inks, you know, where spray sealing would be good because it brings back the vibrancy and look of a freshly stamped card. But this media right here, as well as your alcohol inks, okay, what you see is what you get. So you really don't have to uh, wonder um, what this is going to look like when it's dried because this is already dry right here. It might be a little bit damp on that application of a, uh, Brilliance White. You can use other types of um, pigment inks though, um, like a Hero Arts or something like that, you know, in terms of the white. And it will dry on here because you're not, you know, putting on a big slathering of it or whatnot. But when you're just doing it in like a little form of very thin layer of white or mist, it will dry just fine and set up, okay? So you don't have to spray seal. You can, certainly can if you want to. This is a little bit tacky to the touch. First of all, because it is photo stamping paper, okay? Let's see if I can get this to stick. It's sticking like a vacuum here, but you know, it's a little bit sticky. And then alcohol inks tend to get a little bit sticky when they've been applied down there, especially when they're built up on the surface and not absorbing into a piece of paper like they would on matte cardstock or something like that. So I don't know, I, but on this, I, I just don't feel the, uh, the need to, to spray seal. So I would just send it out as is. Okay. All right. So hope you enjoyed this uh, version of a quick card. And uh, if you have any questions, drop us a note in the comment section. If you like these video, hope you like, uh, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.